Yes, ma'am. The second speaker for today is Dr. Kundabala, ma'am. And the moderator for the session is Dr. S. Balagopal, sir. I would like to uh, say a few words about Balagopal, sir. Dr. S. Balagopal is an alumnus of Government Dental College, Madras, and has procured his MSc in Forensic Odontology from Madras University. He is currently the Vice Principal Hospital, Chennai. He has a dynamic academic experience for more than 28 years and has over 70 publications and has authored nine textbooks in conservative dentistry and endodontics. So has been conferred the Dronacharya Award and fellow Fair Potter Academy Award as well. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Shall I take over and introduce Dr. Kundabella? Yes, sir. You may. Okay, okay. A very good morning to all. And first and foremost, I would like to thank Dr. Mahalakshmi and team for giving me an opportunity to be part of this uh, program for the CRRI. And I'm very, very happy to introduce Dr. Kundabella, a good friend of mine, to this audience. Uh, if it was the uh, audience of a dental, Conservative dentists, I would say that oh, for everybody would know you. But then this is for CRRI. So they are going to listen to you and then appreciate. And a brief intro would be like Dr. Kundabala Mala is presently professor, postgraduate guide, and a PhD guide at Manipal College of Dental Sciences, Mangalore. She's an alumna of the GDC Bangalore. And Dr. Kundabala is a very passionate researcher and has over 180 journal publications. She has been awarded the prestigious IACD's uh, Academic Excellence Award. She has presented several keynote lectures and scientific papers at international as well as national forums. Dr. Kundabala is a member of editorial board and is a reviewer for several peer-reviewed national and international journals. She is a member of PhD and PG Board of Studies of University. She has co-authored a textbook on endodontics. She has served as vice president of IACD and is an executive committee member of IES and ISPRP. It is a privilege to introduce you, Dr. Kundabala, and I welcome you to the virtual podium, and it is all yours now. I'm so happy that I could introduce you. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot. First of all, I like to thank the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share my, uh, you know, experience uh, with all the undergraduates. I, it's a pleasure to, you know, always communicate with undergraduates. I still love more than postgraduate teaching. I still love undergraduate teaching, even though I'm not very much involved now, but still uh, it's a wonderful experience to deal with the young minds. And uh, uh, IACD, I have to thank IACD and SRM organizing team for initiative, such a good initiative to uh, introduce and uh, you know to uh, help the undergraduates to do research and uh, you know to uh, find various prospects, um, and uh, uh, I thank uh, Dr. Balgopal for wonderful sir. It was a wonderful, nice ex uh, uh, introduction, and uh, I welcome all the undergraduates, undergraduate students who have registered for this webinar. And I expect you to do research after listening to this lecture. Let me share my uh, PPT. Yeah. Can you see? Not yet. Okay. Yes. Mm 
Good morning, all of you who have gathered here and who are very enthusiastic to listen to this research topic today to create the new knowledge by doing research or innovations for a better future. At the outset, I thank the organizers for inviting me and uh, you know, everybody should start young. Do you know why this better future by conducting research? Today, we are leading very comfortable life with aeroplanes to fly, air conditioners to enjoy, by cooling room, cool rooms, Jaguar to go around, royally to travel, lifts to reach higher floors without climbing stairs, what not? These are all small contributions by our ancestors to improve our life, quality of life. There are more contributions such as inventions of vaccine, drugs to curious various killer diseases, to uh, you know, textiles to cover our body beautifully, wheels to produce energy, satellite to communicate globally, within seconds, et cetera, et cetera. There are lots, millions of innovations which are helping us day-to-day -day life. Imagine you do some research, which may be very small, you may fail now, which will improve the standards and the quality of our life by finding cure for dental caries. You may think it is very simple, but the dental caries is affecting almost 90% of the human beings or globally. And the oral cancer, if you can find a cure for oral cancers and prevent the periodontal disease, wow, that will be some achievement and contribution to the humanity, isn't it? So I thank the organizers, SRM team, IACD moderator, and my dear delegates, student delegates, for encouraging me by um, you know, joining this webinar. Start today when you are young and energetic. Otherwise, your dream will remain as a mere sheer dream. Take chances now in life so that you will have enough stories to tell your grandchildren, isn't it? And this presentation comes from Manipal College of Dental Sciences, Mangalore which is affiliated to Manipal Academy of Higher Education, which is an institute of eminence declared by the Ministry of Human Resources and Development Government of India. One of the finest colleges I'm working. And I uh, uh, invite all the delegates, including moderators and uh, organizers to visit our town. It's a beautiful town with beach, beaches, number of beautiful beaches. Uh, this is a Marvante beach, uh, which has got a uh, backwater on one side and uh, sea on the other side. And uh, you will be traveling in between, such a beautiful place. And we have Murdeshwar beach, which has got uh, around 124 feet uh, high, a beautiful Shiva statue uh, and a very good resort to stay. We have in the center of the town, we have St. Elocious Chapel, which is a beautiful chapel. You should not miss when you come to Mangalore. And we have, it's called Temple City because we have hundreds of temples. In this uh, 10 square kilometer city, we have hundreds of temples and all of them are beautiful. And uh, this is one of the uh, good temples, Kudroli Gokanateshwar Temple, which has been inaugurated by our. Uh, former uh, Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. The greatest innovations to mankind is a compound interest, according to Albert Einstein. What he means is not compound in interest financially. It is a compound interest from the heart of you to show, to do innovations and research so that you can contribute something to the universe, I mean, global contribution, you can give it to the human, human beings 
or animals in this environment. The quest for knowledge and discovery has always been an inherent human nature from Stone Age to modern age. In the Stone Age, we had a lot of innovations for the survival. Basically, they created fire, they created uh, uh, you know, hand axes, spear points for hunting, scrapers, which could be used as animal heights, and also for shredding plants, plant fibers, and making clothing. And same way, even in the modern age, we have dynamo, computer, plastic, telephone, phonograph, light bulb, X-ray machine, aeroplane, artificial intelligence, mobile, email, GPS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When new knowledge is curated and put in the right hands, not to create uh, atomic bombs, it has the power to bring the high value to change the society. The, there are technological innovations contributed to urbanization and globalization. So today, let us talk about undergraduate level, what you can do. Research starts at schools. In primary schools, we have participated in fairs, science fairs, and science festivals. And you know we have done a lot of research. It may be small time research. But we used to feel proud to do that and exhibit, isn't it? But it is not mandatory at BDS level or MBA, MBBS level. Then why do, why it is required to do research? You know, you don't know the value of research now, but when you go to practice, when you are producing doctors with an understanding of evidence-based medicine, definitely you will have better practice because the patients are very intelligent now and they know that doctor knows everything and he's following evidence, then definitely your practice will become better. To build a good track record, you have very good track record. You have done a lot of research. You have very good citation index. You've been called as a speaker, then definitely you will build a uh, track record for yourself. And if you're planning to go abroad, Sarjit sir must have spoken uh, very well uh, how to go abroad. But uh, if you want to go abroad for higher studies for one of the finest universities, international universities, you need to do research. You need to have some publications. So it is very important if you want to get admissions in these universities. Admission for faculty position. Suppose you finish your post-graduation and you want to get a faculty position after that in top rank university with high salary, you have to have publications and you have to have uh, some funding application at least. And uh, if you would have received grants, it will have additional value. And uh, if you have a lot of publication and if you have your index, the citation index is very good, you'll get definitely a good job in good university. So, dear delegates, I want you to do path-breaking research. Maybe it may look very funny when I talk about today, but definitely it will have a lot of value. I want all of you, at least one of you, to go into this orosystemic link where you can just wear a Google Glass and see the heart and lung of a patient. If you are very good, you can go up to kidney and see, and then do diagnosis or treatment for the systemic diseases, imagine. Then you will be uh, you know, called a doctor completely because you will be treating the systemic condition also. So what are the profits in conducting research? Basically to demonstrate your academic talent, Bring attention to scholars and sponsoring institutions. So, you know, um, we have been uh, uh, requested to do a lot of research in our university. Basically, our university is competing for high grades or higher rank in the universal global ranking. So if we contribute with one Q1 journal, that is Quartile 1 journal, 
you know, university ranking will go higher. So if many contribute, definitely it will. So that's how our university requests us to do research basically with high impact factor journal because it will help for better grading of the university too. Recognition among the peers and professional bodies, uh, uh, you know, if you have your society is growing, like we have some 4,000 or 5,000 members in IACD, that is Conservative Dentistry Society. But if you have to be recognized, people may not have seen you, but they would have heard your names mainly because of your publications and maybe presentations or research. And it facilitates funding. If you have a lot of uh, publications or you have done research and published it, it will definitely attract funding. People will like to, there are various funding agencies and the government will like to give you funds to uh, you know, progress your research. As a guide for the future research, you can contribute a lot. You can bring out many uh, invest, uh, uh, investigators and uh, many researchers by guiding. So you may not have enough time to do all the research, but you can have some research fellows under you and you can guide them. And definitely for all their research, you will get a credit. Obviously your H index will go high and your citations will improve if you do a very good research. Thus, the progress through chosen field. So this is a Google Scholar page. Uh, and it will be written here, citations and H index. So every time we would like to increase this H index and I index, I10 index, basically, and citations, you know, for better grading or for improving ourselves, our prospects. Unfortunately, even though research is mandatory part of the post-graduation as a thesis, but a rudimentary from the undergraduate medical and dental courses in India. It's very unfortunate. Very few research opportunities are available for undergraduate. Lack of encouragement, lack of basic infrastructure for research, no structured mentorship, nobody wants to guide sometimes because they are more bothered about their practice and taking classes and taking salary because they don't get any additional uh, benefits by mentoring you uh, undergraduates. So lack of writing skills uh, for biomedical publication will definitely a uh, very unfortunate situation in India. No additional incentives to students or faculty in India. And it's a very long journey to get academic acclaim in India. Whereas undergraduate, uh, does a very good research. It will be globally announced by the researchers and the university, and it will be credited abroad. And the medical education system in India concentrate mainly on preparing dentists for the general allopathic practice. They want you to go to villages and serve where your children will not have good schools to study, or you will not have good roads to travel. Uh, such situations you have to go and practice, which is not very, you know, very attractive for you all. So students in, in India do not want to have this formal pathway to become physician, scientist, and academicians because nobody recognizes you, basically. In some universities abroad, research is mandatory and it is included in the curriculum. Why do you do, in spite of all these, why do you, we want to live in India and why you want to do research? You know, Jay Macklin, a medical student working at John, John Hopkins University, when he was a student, he discovered heparin, which is helping millions and millions of people. Charles Her and, you know, surviving for their survival, they are using heparin. Charles Herbert Best, a medical student, co-discovered along with his friend, Frederick Banting, he discovered insulin 
which won the Nobel Prize. Maybe he won the Nobel Prize later, but it is discovered when he was a student. Paul Langerhans discovered islets of Langerhans when he was a student during anatomy post-graduation, I mean, undergraduation. Neil Stenson found ferroted duct in sheep, all of which we had a huge impact on the practice of medicine and surgery, thus on human life. So you don't have to work for incentive. You know, your discovery may help the human being, life of a human being, or maybe life generally. So some facts about India. The study that which is done in 2007 found 96% of the research publications are from India are emanate, emanated only from nine medical colleges. We have hundreds of medical colleges, but the only nine medical colleges are producing research publications. 57% of the total medical colleges did not have even single publication. The funding for the research in general or student research in particular is very meager or maybe non-existing. Of course, the status has been improved now, but it was non-existing all these days. The attitude of the students also contributed that most of the students considered research was a waste of time because they didn't know the importance of how much you can grow by doing research because there is no guidance, proper guidance. And they felt that it is not worth participating. Some of them have no interest in research. I understand. Many students feel that the research as a career choice was neither financially rewarding nor had a status. That's what I felt when I just came out of my MDS. Then because I joined Manipal Academy of Higher Education, where they give a lot of importance to research and development and innovations. You know, I had to force myself to do these things. And at the end, I really am proud that I have brought out at least a few articles, few publications, which is helping me, which is helping my university, which is helping many researchers. What is this research? Research is nothing great. It's just creation of a new knowledge and use of existing, you can use a existing knowledge in a new creative way to generate new concept or you can create new methodologies, a new technique for surgery and new concepts for understanding. You know, it's very simple. We are not doing some path-breaking research here, but even the smallest research can contribute a lot. This could include synthesis and analysis of previous research leads to new and creative outcomes. You can use the data of the previous research and you can find out something new in that which the original researcher may not have found and you can just compile it make a new paper and publish. That is what systematic review, we are doing it in systematic reviews. The four cornerstones of good research are, it is just well executed, well analyzed, discussed well, and concluded with the real beneficial effect. So the research, what you are doing should be feasible, should be able to do it in you know small environment in the department or maybe in the department of dental materials or uh, in your campus should be interesting for everybody should be contemporary topic which should help the present problems should be novel something new which should be done ethically and which should be relevant to the present so it can be classified as a pure or applied research. The pure research is basically a basic research which will contribute to the knowledge and uh, maybe uh, to generate new theories, principles, and uh, 
concepts. Whereas applied research aims to solve the specific and practical problems or cure for a disease or a better medicine for some disease. There may be in vitro studies and in vivo studies. So in vitro studies are basically which are done in labs, whereas in vivo studies which are done on human beings or any living organisms, uh, such as guinea pigs or laboratory animals or sometimes on human also. Uh, it's called, uh, uh, you know, case control studies or uh, you can call it as a randomized control trial. X5 studies are basically experimental studies, procedures, which are done on human beings and then the tissue is removed and then sent it to the lab and then examined. Such as some, uh, you know, uh, we have done two, three research on uh, which are X5 study. We did uh, uh, direct pulp capping on teeth which are going for uh, either uh, impaction removal or uh, for uh, orthodontic purpose and uh, left it for three months and six months, and then we extracted the tooth, and then we saw the pulpal condition under lab microscope. There are various research methodologies available. There are quantitative research. We do it with the numbers like, you know, uh, in a population of 1,000, uh, how many of them have got caries? If it is uh, 800 people who have got caries, and then we have 200 people not having caries. So we find out about this quantitative research it is called. You just find out what is existing now. After that, you want to do some qualitative study. You found to find out how, why these 200 people are not having caries. So you conduct some interviews on their nutrition. You conduct a, a simple questionnaire study on them or you see their lifestyle, how they are leading, economical status, the food they are taking, etc., and then do a qualitative research. You know, by doing this simple study, you will get a real good data. You can have descriptive research, like, you know, one disease having, uh, how many of them are having this disease? And how many of them are having particular symptoms like pain in that disease? How many of them are having swelling in this disease? how many of them are having some changes in their pulpal structure. So like that, we can do a risk descriptive study. Or if it has already done a study, you can analyze it once again, and then you can do analytical research. Applied research basically in the therapeutics. Fundamental research for the basic things you want to find out about, you know, stem cells, or you want to do the pulpal physiology, et cetera, et cetera. Exploratory research, you can do it when you want to explore something in the old, which is already done research. Then you bring out some conclusive research to find out basically which is done for the therapeutics. And then when you are doing a research, you would like to do something fine research. So we have hierarchy in the research also. We want to create the best evidence. Your research should carry on and people should use your research for treating patients. For that, you have to do the highest in the hierarchy, like systematic reviews. So systematic reviews are very difficult to do it. The four to five people have to be involved and there is you have to go for a thorough training. So it may be difficult for you now. It may be done by the researchers once they complete the post-graduation and join as a faculty or a researcher. Randomized control trials are basically done by the faculty where they want to check which is more effective among the two drugs or three drugs which are already in the market. Cohort studies basically to find out, you know, in a population, you keep observing them and uh, how many of them with the similar uh, habits or something develop disease? So you follow up all the guys who are having a uh, similar habit and then find out how many of them will be developing uh, disease. So it's a long-term study, which you may not be able to do it at undergraduate level. Case control studies are very easy to do it for you 
or case series you can or case reports you can publish it and uh, uh, obviously editorials and expert opinions for the seniors what are the steps in the research because this you would like to know definitely you have to the step is very very few steps are there and first of all you have to have a research question you would like to do some research on orthodontics so you can create a question in orthodontics you see what are the contemporary issues in orthodontics and then you have to formulate a question or you want to do something on caries or materials you can take up a topic but you have to have some interest in that particular topic suppose you are interested in topic of regeneration you can take up regeneration topic or pulp capping you can find out which is the better material for pulp capping or you want to see which is the best irrigant for root canal which is infected by e fecalis so something like that you can take up and then go to library and do a thorough review of literature pick up all the articles which is available in your uh, library and get it and just go through them and formulate aim and objective for your study you want to find out which is the best disinfectant for root canal therapy so that will be your aim and then objectives are it should be measurable ob objective like which will have a very good uh, killing effect of e fecalis you have to do some study in uh, maybe uh, in the lab microbiological lab and you may have to find out so you have to create some objectives which are measurable then you have to create an hypothesis we have two kinds of hypothesis null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis in null hypothesis you just hypothesize saying that there are no difference in these two materials which are available for disinfection that's how you start your study and after the study you find that there is a significant difference between these two that means your null hypothesis is rejected and then you will have the drug which is very effective will be better than the drug which is not very effective that's how you will create hypothesis experimental tools to test first of all you find out whether you have all the infrastructure and facilities to do this experiment if it is not available if you have to travel a lot to other part of the country then you don't take up such such experiment and another most important part of research is methodology you should understand the methodology properly you have to go through the review of literature and find out which is the best method which is globally accepted and which is very easy which is very economical which can be repeated which is done with very minimal infrastructure but it is accepted currently such methodology you have to take it and when you write a protocol you have to write the one part of the protocol which is very very important is methodology you have to write each and every step of the procedure in the methodology and all the materials along with the manufacturer details you have to write it you should not miss even a single step and then you have to write the methodology once you finish your methodology you should know which data to be followed and which how to analyze the data which is coming out after your research so for that you have to have a statistician who is very good who has understood your project because you have explained to him properly then you have to analyze the data once you complete it along with him you have to sit and you have to explain what you are expecting and then you have to analyze the data 
you can go for some training for statistics and you can do the statistics yourself that will be wonderful otherwise at least you can uh, ask a senior statistician to help you out or a good statistician to help you out then once you get the data and result you should know how to interpret maybe a mentor can help you out to interpret your data what is available and then you have to draw the conclusion with the results and the data what you have got and then you can complete and publish it you can't stop it at that once you feel that you have published it that's the end but you have to have a future perspective of the research and you can continue the research on that particular topic itself and you can compile the data regarding that particular material or that particular technique so you have to have a plan how do you start first you should know what you want to do what you intend to do you want to do research on maybe uh, pulp capping you want to do research on extraction methods or you some periodontal conditions or public health social research so first of all you find out which you are interested in then find out what has already been done by literature review then what the other researchers have done in this field is it worth doing whether it is contemporary or people are talking about it or some research is going on globally and how you can make it more innovative your research should be more innovative with better methodology or better results so how will this work add to the existing knowledge how will the how will your research be accomplished well so for that you have to have proper objectives what are those objectives how will you formulate your objectives objectives have to be precise you have to suppose i'm giving you an example you have to evaluate the compressive strength of a material using which universal testing machine in mpas that's how it should be very precise what instrument you will be using and what units you have to indicate your uh, uh, evaluation and what are you trying to do whether it is a compressive strength or shear bond strength or whatever and basically evaluate and compare it with maybe other material or compare it with the gold standard which is already available it should be a smart objective should be very specific and it should be measurable it should be achievable imagine if you are not able to achieve it at all at the end after doing a major research should be realistic within a time frame you should be able to do any research it should not take up some 2 years when you, your internship is only one year and for in that one year you may concentrate on for just 3 months so you within 3 months you should be able to do this research so it should be time time frame and should cover the entire breadth of the project whatever topic you have taken the entire part or entire aspect of that particular topic should be studied in the project as i told you you have hypothesis null and alternative not all studies can have the hypothesis but it is hypothesis it is better as i told you null hypothesis is basically there is no difference whereas alternative hypothesis says that you may have some difference between these two materials and then you study after the study you find out whether it has rejected the null hypothesis or it has rejected the alternative hypothesis and then bring it bring the conclusion now how will you go about it now tomorrow you want to start a research what are the steps involved first of all you go for training on research methodology that's the best way to deal how to do literature survey how to do how to apply for funds how will you do the statistics 
what are the ethical parts and how to publish it. You just have to go for training. Then you select the research question according to PICO format, which population you want to do study, whether you want to do study on the extracted teeth or whether you want to do on premolars, that's a population. Or maybe you want to do study in a social condition, like you know, you want to do in particular area on all the human beings or adults or children, you know, that is population. Then intervention, what you want to uh, uh, use it as an intervention, whether you want to educate some part of or some part of the group and then uh, uh, compare it with the non-educated group or you can give some fluoride for one part of the group and see whether there is any improvement in fluoridated part compared to non-fluoridated part or you can add something, some medicine for curing some disease for one part of the, uh, this thing and then do it on the other, compare it with the other part. That is intervention. Then you have to have a control, which is a gold standard or a positive or a negative control you can have. And then what do you want to find out at the end? So that is outcome. You want the caries to be, uh, the prevalence of caries to be uh, reduced in particular after treating with this particular medicine. That is your outcome or the pain has reduced with this medicine after you given it for maybe twice a day or thrice a day, that's an outcome. So after that, discuss with your mentor who's an expert in that particular topic and then do a review of literature, go to library, collect many articles on that particular topic and formulate a good protocol. The protocol has to be written beautifully well, because this will help you to write the article also later. So check the infrastructure, whether you have everything you have in your college or uh, in the surrounding area or in your medical college, or there may be some research center next in your place. So you can just see whether there is an infrastructure and funds and then timeline, as I told you before then you have to go for ethical committee clearance, which is mandatory. Whether you are doing an in vitro study or in vivo study, you have to get the ethical committee clearance. Then you conduct the study with the help of an expert statistician, you analyze your data, conclude the study, publish it and follow the study. So how do you get training for the research methodology, literature survey, fund application, et cetera. There is a beautiful internship program by ICMR. Just enroll yourself. Just go through the site, okay? And then, which will give you guidance and there are people who will come and give you training at weekends and some particular time. Just enroll yourself, which is very, very useful. ICMR, School of Public Health, I've got some great researchers who will be giving uh, lectures. Just go through them, enroll yourself. ICMR has got a nice junior research fellowships, which will help you to conduct a study at various levels. Indian uh, Council of Medical Research, ICMR has got a STS uh, program initiated for uh, being basically undergraduate short-term studentship program. And it provides opportunity for all the undergraduates to familiarize with the research methodology and techniques by being associated with the short duration with their mentorship on ongoing research program or for undertaking independent projects too. So this serves as an incentive for them to take up research as a career in the future. And not only uh, conduct a training, they give you funds also. They will give you some 10,000 rupees or something like that. And you can collect, you know, they give a nice certificate which has got a tremendous value. So you can just enroll yourself for this and uh, then you can conduct, uh, 
conduct the study. Then there is an Academy of uh, Advanced uh, Dental Research. You can register yourself. Uh, there is a, a you know, site. You can just go through it and you can go through the education training on the research and it's an excellent program. Then next is the selection of your research topic by PICO, which I've already explained to you. So PICO is nothing but a patient population or problem. Then you have to do intervention. Next is compare it. And then you have to outcome measure. You have to study. So who are these patients? What are the problem you want to study? Then what do you do? What are they exposed to? Then comparison. What do you compare it with? The, compare it with the other material or gold standard. Then what happens after doing the study? What happens and what is the outcome? So this is a PICO format. You just have to select your question according to PICO format. Then discuss with mentors who are the experts in this field or you may have many experts required to do con conduct the study. You may, have, you may have to require an endodontist who will be helping you to explain about the endodontic uh, research question and the concepts. Then you want some, if you are doing a microbiological study in endodontics concerning about endodontic uh, microbiology, then you require one microbiologist to explain you about the microbiological part and giving you uh, uh, guidance regarding the microbiological experiment. Then you require a statistician to help you out for statistics part. So you may require one or more mentors for helping you for this project. Mentor should be an expert. He, uh, the ultimate goal of a mentor is to establish the trainee and make him into an independent researcher because he will be just training you. He will not do the study. Responsibility of mentor is sharing his knowledge and skills. Maybe he can give a demonstration, but you will be doing the study. Guiding and overseeing the trainee's work. When he is trained and he is doing a research, he will come and show you each step and the trainee will... Uh, the uh, the mentor will uh, guide him properly, helping the trainee to make the contact with the other researchers. Suppose uh, uh, I, I require a microbiologist or I require a biochemist. I know many of my medical colleagues. So I introduce him to um, the medical colleague and uh, tell them to help so that uh, the project will go on smoothly. So that and Sometimes I may have to give some recommendation letters also. If uh, my uh, student who has done some research under me, uh, when he's planning to go abroad, I will be uh, make sure that uh, I will uh, give a good recommendation that if he has done the research properly, I will give a recommendation so that when he conducts a research, when he joins as a research assistant, he'll be very useful for the institution. So the trainee, the trainee's job is to reciprocate whatever guide says for providing the work hours. You have to keep some specific work hours to do the research and conduct the study under the guidance of your mentor and taking a proactive role in learning. Every time you have to question your mentor to find out if he says, tell you to do something, not just do it. You have to ask him why you have to do it. What is the benefit? And if you have found out through the later review of literature, there are better methods. Discuss with your mentor that there are better methods. Can I do the study with this technique? And develop and land a, a good job. Then review of literature. Collect many articles on that particular tip. You have to have a beautiful library with all the databases. If not, there are enough general libraries or if you have any friends in, uh, in medical colleges who, was, who are having a um, good library, you can ask them to send some articles or you can write to an author itself and they will privately send you some articles. 
if you want. So this is our Manipal library, which is a very finest library in the uh, country. And uh, it's a beautiful library with a lot of databases. So we don't have to go anywhere, you know. So the, all the institutions should be equipped with a very good library. That's a very good part of infrastructure we can afford to have. And uh, literature search, how do you do literature search? There is a process of examining published resources of information on research and review topic, thesis. There will be thesis available in the uh, library itself. Uh, there are methods of grant applications and uh, various uh, uh, links which are available with the, uh, uh, with the librarian. You can collect it from him. And then there is a chemical drug diseases, et cetera. All the data will be there in the library. You can just pick it up. And there are various clinical trials, uh, protocols, which will be available in the library. Or there will be submission of the report, which is submitted reports in the library. So you can collect it and study properly. And then you can do your research. So the quantity of information is immense and growing with time. Obviously, you don't have much problem nowadays because when we were doing, we had to personally go to various libraries and collect it. If we have friends, fine. Otherwise, it would have been difficult. But now everything is available in uh, internet and you just have to, you know, uh, and there are some illegal sites which will provide you almost all the uh, articles which are available. So you can have some friends uh, who generate, who know how to get the articles and you can collect the articles or you can write to author. That's the best way to do it legally. And familiarity with the right kind of databases. You should know which all databases which are available for reviewing. The, the databases should be good databases which are globally accepted like PubMed, Embase, Web of Science, Ski Finder, the Cochrane Library for systematic reviews, International Pharmaceutical Abstracts, Scopus and Google Scholar, Go PubMed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, there are various. So, how to go about it? I'll just give you an example how to go about it with the, uh, our PubMed. You go to PubMed Central. You just open this page, and then you go for Advanced. Suppose you want to go for particular problem or particular question, you just have to just click this advanced part. Once you go to advanced part, you will get this page. What you have to do is you just have to click whatever you want to click. You want, I want a dental caries, dental caries. Then you have some builder questions like, you know, and or, so you just right click and, and then write prevention. I want to do some research on caries prevention. And then there is a lot of topic which are going on, talks which are going on on charcoal. So I want to find out whether the charcoal is very effective in prevention of caries. So I put all these words and go for search. I get a lot of articles from PubMed which are accepted. Then I'll just go into these so, so easy. You don't have to go and each and every article. You don't, don't have to go through and find out whether it is, uh, you know, done on charcoal. And then you, you know, it will take a lot of time. Instead of that, you just go for this advanced technique of search. You will end up in nice articles which are required for you. And then you can keep on adding these terms, mesh terms. So that, you know, it will be very useful and you can be very specific articles you can get. Then formulate good protocol. Effective protocol should be concise and precise. Avoid jargon terms, you know, to be hi-fi. You avoid all these terms because nobody will appreciate if you write some complicated words. Avoid passive tense. It should be simple. People should understand what you have written. Avoid passive tense. Instead of that, you write active tense. You know, it will be more appreciated by the reviewers. Avoid unnecessary wordiness. Unnecessarily don't explain, keep on explaining things. You should be concise. 
revise and rewrite it many times. Confined to the number of pages which has been specified by the ethics committee or the research, uh, uh, research societies. Don't crowd the text. Use a font that is easy to read. Avoid plagiarism. You must, be, must have heard of plagiarism. You are not supposed to copy others, you know, uh, written matter, from others' written matter. So you have to rewrite it. You just go through, read it properly and rewrite it what you have understood and make sure that uh, you avoid plagiarism in your uh, protocol. Spell check and language check is very important. Next is check the infrastructure and apply for funds. Fine laboratory you have to have, equipment should be available and there should be a research lab uh, expert or a lab technician. He should be able to handle the equipment. If he doesn't know how to use it properly and if he doesn't know how to interpret it properly, there's no use. So make sure that some old research with the equipment which is lying there for many years and they've been doing research, such labs you go. Don't go to the lab where it is recently the equipment have been installed and the technician has not got proper training. Such research labs are useful, useless. So uh, good uh, library uh, with lots of databases should be available as an infrastructure. Then budget information. So be realistic. When you are writing a budget, be realistic. Don't write, just don't be greedy. Don't write unnecessary things. There are two parts in the uh, budget. You have a non-recurring and recurring. Non-recurring include equipment, administrative cost, personnel, travel, etc. Whereas overhead uh, uh, and then recurring part where you, you know, things can be recurred which can be used on other uh, drugs also. I mean, other researchers also. And you have overhead and contingency costs. Uh, explain what costs represent as contingency. How do you arrive at your uh, figure, this figure? Be specific and thorough and uh, follow the request, requested format. So this is how it should be. You can write about travel, what all consumable you are planning to use, and, uh, uh, you know, if you have an, a contingency, the 10% of contingency, you can keep it. Uh, then overhead cost, maybe 10%, you know, you may have to print some, you may have to travel, you may have to, uh, you know, get some Xerox, etc. So you have to put it in conting, uh, contingency or the overhead cost. Then if you have, keep a research assistant, how much you are paying a research assistant? Then if you are planning to attend a, uh, uh, attend a conference to present the partial data of your research, you can just ask for some travel grant, et cetera, et cetera. That's how, but you have to specifically mention about each and everything what they have asked for and then write it and then submit the data. Identify a funder. It's a big and important task. You may have local uh, funder, or national funder or international funder, and you find out about the trust areas. There may be some trust areas like women and child health. There may be trust ideas about the regenerative endodontics or something. Then you should see what is the trust area and you have to apply for that particular funder. Because you have women and child and you are doing some compressive strength study, you can't apply the fund because they will not provide you fund. And then priorities, you see what are the priorities? What is their priority? Funder wants to know about COVID situation. You may have to submit something in the COVID situation. That is the priority now funder has. So identify a funder. There are various funding agencies like Department of Biotechnology, Science and Engineering, Life Sciences, Indian uh, Council of ICMR, BGST in uh, uh, Karnataka, it is available. I don't know whether it is available elsewhere. Then Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, then Department of Science and Technology. So all these are funding agencies which are available. IDA has got a fund for a faculty fund for 20,000, then postgraduate 15,000, 
and for undergraduate 5000 they will provide you and within that budget you can do some small time research and you can for undergraduate 5000 you can do good research with that 5000 you can just uh, do some small studies and then uh, you know uh, many of our students usually get it you see that manipal college of dental sciences manipal college of dental sciences so you know there are many uh, uh, we apply and then we get it every time every year then icmr provides sts 5000 uh, 10 to 12000 now and then short term studentship program by sts uh, by icmr then sudanshu icmr sudanshu we have you can submit it to this link then ugc british council scholarships which are available and uh, icmr has got many funds so you can just go through icmr site and then uh, you know for postgraduate different funds are available for undergraduate many funds and for researchers many funds are available then we have uh, as i told you icmr has got many funds then uh, what are the opportunities for the medical research in india so they can promote medical sciences to provide short term studentship and uh, this uh, uh, vaignanic uh, uh, yojana we have and uh, next step is IC, uh, iec clearance which is mandatory as i told you you have to submit a protocol and uh, the protocol to be as per the IEC guidelines and attend the scientific committee meet with all your document copy, answer the questions if they have any queries or you find out and then resubmit your protocol and do all the modification while resubmitting. Whatever modifications they suggest, you have, may have to include it, incorporate it. And if you want to improve your protocol, you can improve your protocol and then submit it once again to IEC and start the work once you get the clearance, not before that. Conduct the study properly with no deviation from the protocol. If the deviation is needed, you have to get approval from the IEC once again. Start and complete the study on time, documentation and recording. Demography and informed consents are very important in the documents what you collected and you have to keep it for at least five years if you have got a fund because the funding agency may come and do the inspection anytime and make sure don't procrastinate things you have to keep any record you have to do it at that time if you have to if you need to keep some photographs of some patients you make sure that you take the photograph and keep it patient may move out somewhere and you may not be able to cash the patient. So better collect all the documents without postponing things. And uh, suppose any mishaps happen during your this thing, you have to inform the IEC immediately and document all the mishaps which are happening and then inform IEC. And then you have to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, if you have taken a, a insurance, then insurance will cover it. Otherwise, your institution may cover it sometimes. Uh, otherwise, you may have to do it or from the funds. Make sure that the mishaps are uh, taken care properly. Record all the findings and submit timely, timely review, timely report, especially for granting agencies. Expect you to, if they say November 30th, you have to give it on November 30th or much before that even it has to reach if you are sending it by post by 30th it has to reach the funding agency okay data analysis select a good statistician study uh, explain the study to a statistician if you throw some numbers at him he will throw back some uh, numbers at you so explain it properly to him what is your study and what you expect the result how the results will be and what you want to uh, search what are your objectives explain to him properly and participate in the analysis so otherwise he will do some analysis and give it back to you and both of you don't understand it then collect the raw data whatever raw data he has done during the analysis tell him to give because some of the um, publishing 
journals ask for a raw data. They want to find out whether you have done the research actually or you have just manipulated things. So you may have to collect the raw data uh, from him and then uh, final data too. Ask for additional tests, graphs, diagrams and tables. Just go through literature and find out what all new statistical tests they have done recently in their uh, journal. And then they may expect you to do some additional tests for better statistical data and then conclude it. Conclusion should be drawn from the analysis and to test the objective and hypothesis. Send it for publication. So publication is another talk as such. So I don't want to go in detail about publication. And scientists must not only do the science. They have to write science. If your whole research is not published, it is a waste of time, waste of energy, waste of money, and it will be useless. So you have to publish your this thing. You keep trying. Even if one journal rejects, send it to second journal. Even the greatest rejectors are, even now they are facing rejection. So don't worry. Don't get disappointed. You keep on sending it for publication. And once you publish your data, you can rest at least. But after that, you can do some follow-up study. If you want to continue research as your uh, career, you can do some follow-up study and pile up a data. There are many of my students have gone into research and they are doing extremely well now because they've been doing research on one particular aspect and collected data. So if you say that word, whatever research they are doing, their name comes first. So it is like that. So there are people who are doing a lot of research on one particular aspect and become Uh, DCI to include that. Then incentivize peer reviewed indexed publications by the students. Manipal University gives incentives to all the students once they publish the uh, article and including the staff members. So, some fee waiver on paper presentation at national and the international. So, they give us a travel grant, they give us registration fee for. Even the international uh, conferences, you can collect the uh, you know, points. We give for every article, we get points and we can collect those points and we can go for national and international uh, conferences. Prizes to students. Every college day, we give them, whoever has done uh, research will get one certificate and some prizes for the uh, best publication, et cetera. Regular exposure to undergraduate, to recent uh, medical research through discussions and to conducting webinars like this and uh, maybe discuss in uh, our newsletters, et cetera, et cetera. Separate fund earmarked for student research. Every student in our college will get around 5,000 rupees if he wants to conduct any study. So can, you know, incentivize the student then sponsor state, zonal, and national level that are conferences for students. They can go with the research money, what they have got, and promotion for inter-institutional collaborative work and corporate involvement. Maybe some companies, usually they ask for some students who are good at research. You can recommend them, and they may get, get a job or they can make a career with that company and mandatory structured mentorship program in uh, medical colleges to promote the research. So to conclude, generate scientific data about diseases and treatise, help the researchers determine the effectiveness of current medical therapies and treatments, contribute to scientific breakthroughs, increase knowledge of disease progression, help improve the lives of those with illness, and create evidence to improve life. 
create a difference. And then you can be at peace like Buddha. You will grow like him huge. And then you will be giving peace or spreading the peace to the humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kundabala. It was an exhaustive presentation about research. You gave all the advantages of research, the status of research in Indian dental colleges, the types of research and the various terminologies associated with the research, then the significance of each type of research and who can best do them. But the best part was, whatever you were mentioning, you were citing examples from our day-to-day -day life or from our uh, college activities. That was the best part. It made it, I'm sure all students would have found it very, very simple to understand this. And it was very useful for me too. So I would like to thank you once again from my own self too, apart from uh, the organizer. Now let me see if there are any questions from the participants. And there's one question which is asking, who's asking you, how do we choose a journal for publication? Um, better to choose the best journal. If it gets rejected in that journal, you can send it to the next best. Always select a best journal and then just go through instructions to authors and then read it thoroughly, maybe once, twice, thrice, and then uh, whatever uh, publication, that is manuscript you have written, you have to modify it according to that particular journal and send it. You can sit with a mentor and ask which is the uh, specialty journal, preferably like, you know, you can't send an endo worker to a prosto journal or prosto worker to a ortho journal. So find out what all journals are available, which will be publishing it and find out whether it is general reading like, you know, for a general practitioner or a specialist. If you have done something basic research, better to send it to some specialty journals. But if you are sending uh, some innovations which may help the general public or a treating uh, dentist, better to send it in JADA or, uh, you know, uh, IDA journal, etc. So you have to select a journal according to the work what you have done and try to give uh, uh, try to send it to the best journal available and then if it gets rejection you know it's okay there are many journals which are available you can send it to the next best journal mm -hmm. Mahalakshmi is also an uh, editor for many journals <laughs> now, and a lot of publications are coming now with wonderful very good journals true. by Mahalakshmi <laughs> I think uh, I she can also add to whatever her experience with publication. And for that, I should thank Kunda, Dr. Kundabala only. She is oh. my inspiration. Oh, uh, you know, doing research with PGs is uh, is very easy and publishing. But doing uh, research with UGs and publishing is something I learned from her. But I've still not been able to do it here. Uh, so that's a reason so that we choose, chose her for you know, delivering this uh, lecture. Oh, so nice. And she was very lucid in that. And I think some related question is here now. Will we benefit from research and publication during UG for further studies abroad? I think she answered yes. that. She did say that it will be very, very useful. Definitely. Because, yeah. uh, uh, you know, not only publication, if you can record whatever you have done. Uh, there was, uh, I'll give you an example. There was a, uh, there was a uh, gold medalist who is a topper and a blue ribbon gold medalist in our department who was a tutor. And she was very happy. She used to study well to go abroad and give exams. And the other guy who was an average guy, who was a tutor, he used to collect a lot of every case he used to record. And every case he has uh, you know, kept the record and maintained documents properly. And then when they went abroad, he got selected. True. You know, it is true. the documentation. Yes. It's also very yes. important. Yes. Not just getting a gold medal and being, uh, you know, this thing. Uh -huh. They said uh, he can handle cases because he has done the work. He he, he is uh, the, good for any clinical work. So he, 
will be more useful than the skull and they took mm -hmm. yeah in fact, noticed, I think, yes. uh, in fact i think even uh, they they are uh, they are doing so many uh, extra curricular activities every single activity what they do if they record and keep or they have the certificates available even that helps actually yes very much fair but including social service yes. as well as uh, fine arts yes. and uh, it's not so if you can a... play some instrument if you have any such talent all those count yes. And then at least one day a week, they keep aside for recording. Yes, yes. All teachers. Yes. And yeah, another and good one that. point that uh, Dr. Kunda mentioned was about mentor. So mm. this helps a lot, actually. Yes. Uh, we had That's a student of ours who actually did a, you know, she used, she contacted someone abroad, made him a mentor, and he made sure that, you know, she got, she, he gave her tips, he gave her nice, uh, you know, the ways in which to approach, what to do. In fact, he included her, she is very good in English. So she, she helped with manuscript writing, yes. undergraduate student. And, uh, you know, she got so much, uh, I got so much information wow. from her, you know, yeah. talking to her. So avenues are open. Uh, yes. It's only that we have to develop yes. ourselves, yes. that's the only thing. Sure. Our yeah. undergraduates, because we have an undergraduate research forum, we conduct uh, every year undergraduate uh, uh, conference, research conference in our university. And uh, uh, around uh, all the students are made into, you know, whoever is interested in research can become a member. And uh, they do, uh, along with the mentor, one research uh, per year. So, so some four to five publications they collect it at the end which will be really useful. And some of the undergraduate research has gone to Q1 studies, Q1 quartile mm -hmm. one uh, publications and uh, the amount of uh, knowledge they have collected, the way writing styles, because they are from good schools and also their English is very good. And they know the technology. They are the best for mm -hmm. technology than us actually. Correct. So, uh, and they make it very interesting because their English is good, very, nicely written manuscript so they publish it in very good so undergraduate research has to be encouraged now because they are good very young mind so wet mind so if you throw stones it sticks yeah. <laughs> thank you so much thank you so thank much you. Uh, you. I, we are running short of time actually we are uh, uh, budging into Vidya's uh, presentation so oh, yes. thank you so much and Dr. Thank you for so your much. efforts yeah. that you put in and given such a wonderful uh, lecture. We would like to appreciate you with a token of appreciation, uh, a certificate. Vidya, please display the certificate. Thank you, Mahalakshmi, and for calling me, inviting me, Dr. Kachkumar, please. for thinking of me, sir, for moderating. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank everybody. you, Kandabala. So happy. And to Dr. Balagopal for his lovely moderation and lovely way Thank of introducing you. Dr. Balagopal.